Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about extremely large black holes. Every galaxy in our universe, or almost every galaxy, has a supermassive black hole at the center, and some of these are ridiculously large. And today we're going to imagine what would happen if such black hole occurred near our solar system. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in one of the previous videos, I've actually already tried to put a supermassive black hole in our solar system, and uh, we saw kind of what happened. Nothing good. And we also tried to put a really small black hole next to our planet Earth, and we've discovered that nothing good happens from that too. But, well, our galaxy has Sagittarius A star in the middle. It's about uh, 4 million masses of Sun. But some supermassive black holes out there are a lot, a lot, a lot more massive. So I'm going to actually go in here and start a new simulation and give you an idea of what kind of a size we're talking about here. So let's actually just place our Sagittarius A star right here. So this is actually already really big. The radius of this, if we look at it here, is close to about 8% um, of the distance of Earth from the Sun. So, basically, if I were to place Earth, this is where Earth would be if this was our own solar system. It would be somewhere around here, right here. There is Earth. So this is Sagittarius A star. Now, some of these supermassive black holes that we've discovered, specifically the type of the sort of a galaxy known as a quasar that I've talked about um, in the video last year, you can check it out on the channel, um, these quasars often host ridiculously massive, supermassive black hole. Um, some of these don't even, there's, there's no term for them, they should be called ultra-massive black holes. Like for example, in 2015, there was one black hole that was discovered that was the brightest, one of the brightest objects in the skies, and also uh, the most massive discovered to date. Now, um, a few years later, we discovered another one that may actually be larger, but um, it hasn't been confirmed. So as of now, the uh, supermassive black hole known as SDSS uh, J010013 280225.8 is very likely the most massive we know. Now, I'm going to show you how big it is in comparison to Sagittarius A. So we're going to actually place it right here and increase its mass to 12 billion masses of the sun. So there it is. There is the uh, Sagittarius A star. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see because there's really very little uh, reflection here. But if I put a star nearby just so we can actually see it a little bit better. Let's, let's put something big. Let's put Betelgeuse. There we go. Betelgeuse is a big star, so we'll be able to see this much easier. So, um, there is the SDSS J010012802. So, um, this particular black hole and, and this particular quasar, and I guess this particular galaxy, is located... Oh, look at that, it's attracting things right away. It's already swallowing everything. Uh, it's located about approximately 12.8 12 billion light years away from us, meaning that the light that we see coming from this galaxy is uh, close to 13 billion years old. In other words, um, right now, this black hole is very likely a lot larger than, than we see it or we saw it uh, back in the days. So the light from it is already 12.8 billion um, years old, so it's very likely that um, if we were to somehow uh, warp space and land right next to it right now, it would be a lot more massive. Now, um, quasars are very unique um, stellar objects, but we're not going to discuss them in this particular video in a lot of detail, uh, mostly because I've already talked to them. Uh, I've already Mostly because I've already talked about them previously, but also because it's not really important for this particular video. In this video, I want to really focus on this, re uh, this black hole, its size, and essentially uh, how large it would be in comparison to our own solar system. And we're going to find out what would happen if you actually place this in our solar system in a few seconds. Uh, now, interestingly, you'll see that 
Betelgeuse is about to start losing its mass because the black hole is going to basically stretch and warp it and the tidal forces are going to be so strong that it's going to turn it into a long ring um, and a long accretion disk around itself which is then slowly going to be sucked into the black hole which will then produce these tremendous jets that create quasars and look at that it was extinguished right away it turned into a gas giants that's really interesting so that's the end of Beetlejuice and uh, one thing I wanted to mention before I uh, change to our own solar system is that this is actually not a very realistic size here because in reality this black hole is a lot a lot larger um, in this game for some unknown reason the actual diameter is not uh, accurately represented because in reality uh, the size of this black hole is a lot larger and I'm going to show it to you when I put this in our solar system so let's go there now and here it is our beautiful solar system and well here's the thing we need to actually zoom out of here quite dramatically for me to be able to place this black hole in our solar system or close to our solar system just to see what's going to happen. So the reality is that the event horizon of that particular black hole uh, lies around four light days away from the center of the black hole. Now, how much is four light days or you know, uh, how many astronomical units is this? Well, we can figure this out mathematically pretty easily in the game. Let's actually just take a look at this. So here is one light year. This is one light year. You can kind of see that it's sort of divided into these squares in the game. And we're looking at the uh, distance of four light days, which is approximately one ninetieth or close to about, uh, I guess, um, one hundredth of this distance. So if we look at this square, this is approximately... 6,000, uh, what is this, 6,600 6, astronomical units. So we need about a tenth of that, which is about 66 or maybe 67 astronomical units. So in other words, the actual radius of this black hole is going to be something like this big. So it's going to be covering the entire solar system. So we need to kind of just place it maybe next to it and just to see what's going to happen. So let's actually do this right now. Or actually, I think this is a mistake. The, the more correct value here would be uh, close to about seven times the distance of Pluto from the sun. Because I think I miscalculated a little bit. So the actual um, radius of this black hole would be close to about maybe 280-ish astronomical units. So let's place it right around here. So there it is. There is that large black hole that I'm going to name uh, by its shorter uh, name, SDSS J01001 uh, plus 2802. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention about this black hole is that as a quasar, it's obviously very, very bright. And because it is so bright, its total luminosity is equivalent actually not no not equivalent it's 40 times stronger than the total luminosity of all of the stars in our galaxy it is a ridiculously bright object even though it's a black hole those uh jets that it emits from both sides uh, the relativistic jets that all quasars have um create such a bright object in the sky that we can see it from very very far away and it's very 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 bright but let's actually decelerate time a little bit go to our planet Earth, or maybe just stay here, and then see what happens to our solar system. So we're going to let it... Oh, Jesus, that's way very, very fast. We're going to let it go, and we'll see that everything in our solar system starts to get sucked into this black hole. So if such a massive object passed by, even within like several thousand light years away from us, it would be essentially deadly to our solar system. So things will not last here very long. They're going to get sucked into the black hole very, very quickly. You'll see them, all of them basically falling into the black hole in a few seconds now. And a lot of the things here will obviously get spaghettified as they approach the black hole. Now our planet Earth is right there and you can kind of see how things are getting stretched more and more as they approach the black hole. And our planet Earth is also going to start getting destroyed really, really soon. This is essentially what it looks like 
if I were to decelerate time a little bit, we're now moving at relativistic speeds and we're about to enter the event horizon of this black hole. And let's actually see what happens to our whole solar system. Let's zoom out a little bit and you'll get to see how everything basically gets absorbed inside as a long kind of a spaghetti that's falling into this black hole. And that's going to be the end of that solar system. Well, so that wasn't particularly fascinating. It wasn't particularly exciting either. So maybe we'll try something else. So let's actually see. Um, so imagine this was the um, central black hole in our galaxy. Let's actually see what kind of effects we'll be getting from this black, black hole in terms of uh, gravitational effects. If we were to place Earth at the same distance where, where it's located in our, in our galaxy. So at a distance of about um, 23,000 light years away. So I'm going to place Earth right around here. And now we're going to zoom into it and just take a look at how fast is it increasing speed toward the black hole. And you'll notice that it's actually not that fast. So as a matter of fact, it's increasing speed very, very, very barely. So the tidal effects here from this black hole at this distance are actually quite minuscule. Even though it does look so big, the gravitational effects are not particularly high. And this suggests that in that particular galaxy, where this black hole is located, there's normal stars out there with normal planets with potentially even life. So even though it's such a powerful quasar and such a super massive black hole, as a matter of fact, possibly the most massive black hole we've, we've ever detected. Uh, despite all of this, this might actually be still a normal galaxy with normal stars that we can totally go and place in uh, orbit around this black hole by creating these randomly uh, generated stars that I'm going to generate right now. Placing them everywhere around this black hole just to simulate a kind of a miniature galaxy that you'll see in a second. And a lot of these stars are actually barely visible because they're, compared to the black hole, they're really, really tiny. So we may actually have to place something larger. Let's place a uh, Betelgeuse. Let's place uh, one large Betelgeuse here. And let's actually place the largest star as well, UI Skutai. It's going to be right here. So this is how small the largest stars are in comparison to this tremendously huge black hole. Well, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and hopefully now you know what would happen if you placed the most massive black hole in our solar system. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Looks like I destroyed all my stars. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with people that enjoy watching educational videos. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.